So while we wait for Evan, let me just give us a brief of who he is. He's the founder of um, Beluga, an educational platform that provides teachers and students with the ability to connect, communicate, and collaborate with their peers around the world. Good morning, so, guys. Um, am am yes, I live right now? Can you oh, hear me? Fine. Excellent, we're live. Sorry about He's that, fine. a little technical difficulties on this side. Uh, thanks for having me on. My name is Evan Schwartz. I'm the CEO and founder at Beluga. Uh, Beluga is a global education platform that is focused on making education accessible, impactful, and equitable to all learners worldwide. And that's really what we're doing here today with the summit, is understanding how technology and digital citizenship have come together, especially during these days uh, when everyone is connected and learning is at a little bit of a dip. Right? So how do we use digital citizenship to create a bridge as opposed to a barrier through technology to provide students and teachers of all ages with more access to education? Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna share my screen. I prepared a few different slides for this. And I think whoever the host is has to give me access uh, to share a screen on this. Bear with me for one second here. Okay, uh, uh, let me do that. Can you make a request, please? Yep. Not sure who the host of this session is, but okay, I'm okay, try try sharing okay. now. Perfect. Thank you. We're just going to walk through a few different elements of what's happening within the world, especially here within North America. Uh, we've seen a huge spike in cases recently. Uh, a lot of schools here in New York uh, have closed a thousand plus over the last 24 hours. Uh, so we're really looking at how education can be reimagined and digital citizenship is a key component of that. Now that everyone is connected, how are they creating the best learning experience possible for themselves? Just a few different stats I'll throw at you real quick. There we go. Uh, so this is dates back actually to this previous summer. Uh, so COVID and economic social statistics, 90% of the global, global aviation fleet has been grounded since May, 2020. Uh, global committees dropped 20.4% in March, 2020. Global trade dropped, tourism dropped, uh, and forecasts show a tremendous dip uh, in overall poverty. So we really need to start thinking about these numbers, not just you know, what does school look like, but what does the home situation look like for learners and how are they able to access technology and learning material. In terms of social cost, uh, the education of 1.6 billion learners has been disrupted. Uh, if you look at it globally, that's nine out of 10 students, right? They're in complete different learning environments. And just a little bit of insights here that lend to this, uh, so technology inside 49% of high school and university students worldwide stated they had taken an online course in the preceding 12 months. Uh, spending insights, total global technology spend in education is set to reach over 300 billion by the year 2025 and COVID has absolutely expedited this process. Uh, and network insight, right? According to UNESCO, 50 million new teachers are needed to provide quality universal primary and secondary education within the next 10 years. Now, if we really start to dig into those stats and, and how this really all ties together with digital citizenship and using technology for good is understanding that students have been doing this process previously, right? Parents are now spending more money out of pocket. Schools are looking to hire more teachers, although there's a tremendous void in the space right now. Uh, not only teachers that are enrolling in the profession, uh, but teachers that are resigning from the profession, right? We expect this dip to continue over the next few years as well, uh, especially with educators being frontline workers in a sense now, right? And really putting their lives on the line. So where we need to go with this is understanding how technology can provide such a valuable aspect to every single student worldwide and give them the format that they're used to consuming information already. So the future history of education, right? This slide I absolutely love. Uh, the slide on the left uh, is a 19th century classroom. Uh, the one on the right was probably taken within the last 30 days. Uh, it's not much of a difference in the traditional atmosphere, right? I know this, this picture can be startling for most, uh, but it's something that inspires our team over here is understanding we need to be better now, right? That black and white picture 
there was no access to technology. There was no access to information. Those 20 learners and that one educator uh, were pretty much handcuffed, right? And what we mean by that and why we use such a strong word is they were handcuffed to the people around them to dictate their learning experience, right? If that teacher had a bad day or a good day, uh, if the students acted out in the class or were really engaged, uh, it was a complete coin flip, right? Where learners these days are still accessing the same format as we could see, but once they leave the classroom, they have access to this little device, which is either a phone, a computer, a tablet, a desktop, uh, and that could give them access to the world. All right, so how do we start understanding and bridging digital citizenship elements into this to understand that the classroom is no longer just 20 people? And with that comes a lot of responsibility. Uh, and Mary Alice and her team at DigiSit Summit always say a great line uh, that we really appreciate is, you know, would you put a kid in a car without training? Right? We're doing the exact same thing, not only for students, uh, but for new and older teachers as well, as we're putting them in an environment where technology is ultimately thrust upon them, uh, but done so without the proper training and use of resources where they're actually able to excel within the space. So some X factors that we could really go through as well here is access, right? That is always the key component of digital citizenship with technology, right? How are people getting access to this information? Equity, right? is this information based on socioeconomic or racial factors, right? With technology and with access points, people become learners and educators worldwide and are able to distribute that content. Uh, and impact, of course. How is this process creating sustainable and tangible results in all of our communities? So really looking at it is how are we bridging the classroom into the community for students to create action and impact within their own world? So where do we go from here, right? The big question, COVID has been in our environment now uh, for almost a year, right? Schools are continuing to be disrupted, cases are soaring, uh, and there's a, just a ton of question marks around education. One of the key factors that we saw come out this past spring in the US was universities moving away from standardized testing. This was a major pin to fall within the country on our side. So one of the universities, University of Southern California, it's a really large school uh, within the state of California, right in the heart of Los Angeles, major film program uh, over there. What these guys did, which is why the pin fell, is they moved away from standardized testing, which here stateside are the SATs and ACTs. So for students to enter university, they have to take these tests. These are pretty much their stamp of approval, depending on what school they're going to get into. Some of these weigh more than their extracurricular activities, uh, their past GPA within primary and secondary education. Uh, and USC completely came out and said, hey, we are waiving the SATs and ACTs. Uh, for the incoming classes. Now, there's two scopes that could really happen with this, right? With the SATs and ACTs, USC could say, we're creating our own, which would completely blow out the equity gap, right? Or they could say, we're not requiring testing at all anymore. What we're going to do is really start looking at content depth and knowledge. So instead of just focusing in on one test score that we know is putting so much pressure on kids uh, and the mental health crisis is skyrocketing from that as well. How do we really create this one learning environment that understands lifelong learning and could support a learner's goals both in and out of the classroom from primary to secondary to university and ideally their professional career as well? Why I mentioned the equity gap. So the lowest average scores for each part of the SAT came from students with less than $20,000 in family income. The highest scores came from those with more than $200,000 in family income. That is a tremendous disparity there. Uh, and again, understanding how we gain access, not only to the people around us, but through device, education, and technology is able to completely level the playing field. Then we get into the average student loan debt. I don't know how it works so much over in Nigeria with student loan debt, but here in the US, it is an absolute crisis. Right? Most students in the US are racking up $30,000 a debt before they graduate and have a job. So these kids are working their butts off uh, part-time, full-time within college. Uh, what it's also done is it's kind of increased the average age of a college student as well, uh, with our national debt going to $1.6 trillion from student loans by themselves. Now you look at some other countries, there's still a lot of high numbers there. The United Kingdom absolutely mirrors us. Uh, but some of the other countries are starting to try to figure out how do we not necessarily just make free education, 
but how do we create supplemental education programs? And that's where technology is able to come in. So the impact outlook, right? As of August, 2020, about 51 universities and colleges have dropped the ACT and SAT requirements for at least this current term. 51 schools and trillion dollars in debt is not enough to create an industry shift though. Right, so how do we move forward from there? These are the questions I encourage everyone to ask themselves, right? especially looking at how digital citizenship uh, and how technology is in creating a thriving learning environment. So how will universities and colleges assess incoming students if they're waiving standardized testing? How will that equity gap play into lifelong learning experiences and access for students worldwide? And what impacts will this have on big business, both from a recruitment and financial standpoint? So if you look at all these and really start to dissect them, it's pretty much asking the question, right? How are we gaining access for every single student to education at a very early age and then continuing those resources around them? And this is, again, where digital citizenship really plays a strong part is understanding even from those early days of a child being four or five, six years old, they're utilizing devices. I don't know if you guys have uh, young kids or nieces and nephews, uh, but I always see my nieces and nephews playing with tablets and phones. They know it way better than all of us. I mean, it's probably their first motor skill that they pick up is swiping left or swiping right. And you know, that's kind of the world that we're living in these days. Uh, so preparing them at a really early age, not in the negative sense. I mean, this is something that we should not be scared of whatsoever, uh, is this is their world, right? They're in a digital generation. Uh, we grew up in a generation without technology and understanding how to connect to people. Uh, we have to position this in a positive way. There are absolutely negatives that come along with it. Uh, if you haven't seen The Social Dilemma, I highly encourage everyone on this meeting today uh, to go watch it. It's a great documentary on Netflix that really gives you some insight and light into how big business is util utilizing, excuse me, high level data from a user to serve them up content, uh, but also advertisements. Now, if we're smart and we do this the right way, we could train students uh, and give them the skill sets to understand how to be digital natives without really exposing themselves. And the last part that I wanna go through today, which I know is near and dear to a lot of the hearts uh, on the call today, uh, are the sustainable development goals. Right? We utilize this here at Beluga for every single piece of content that we work on. We're actually the worldwide leader uh, in education curriculum connected to the goals with over 50,000 hours of educational material uh, for the primary and secondary community. Uh, if you're not familiar with the goals, quick overview on them. So in 2015, the United Nations launched an initiative called the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, and their goal was really in the next 15 years, now 10 years, uh, to eliminate 17 of the world's largest problems. Uh, these are things like no poverty, gender equality, uh, protecting life on land, um, climate action, quality education, good health and well-being. And each one of these goals has different targets within them. The big aspect that education can do and technology is understanding how are we consuming information, not just from a learning initiative and homework assignment, but how are we able to take this information from the community or from the classroom, excuse me, into the community. Now, is this possible to achieve by 2030? Maybe, maybe not. That's not the point at all. I don't think at this stage, uh, it's how can the public and private sector contribute through a triple bottom line strategy, a triple bottom line, people, planet, and profit, right? So if we understand how can we really achieve these sustainable development goals, it has to come from digital citizenship and again, technology. Uh, just some insights on the next generation as well. These are hot button issues Gen Zers want companies to address as well as educational institutions. This is a really important aspect when we start thinking about digital citizenship because a lot of these are hot button topics, right? Depending on the community or the learning environment you're in, uh, these might be a little bit too heavy for some schools, but what we do know is that kids are dying for this information, right? After that final bell rings, they're accessing all of this stuff on their mobile device, on their computer. So we have to teach how to not only consume this information, but how to then digest it as well uh, and then spit out a positive result from it. So how are we teaching kids about job creation, racial equality, sexual harassment, women's equality, climate change, gun control, LGBTQ rights, fake news, all these hot button topics with access to information 
most important part is understanding how are we not fearing this information, but how are we able to just educate students on it. And that's a quick overview. I know we're really short today on it. Uh, if anyone has any questions, I'm more than happy to speak with them. Uh, Nigeria is near and dear to our hearts as well. It was actually one of our first expansion countries uh, back in 2017. So we love working with the local communities down there. Uh, huge thanks to the Digital Summit as well for giving us this opportunity to share just some of our insights and thoughts. Uh, and really look forward to connecting with everyone from there. Hey, Evan, thank you so much. Before you were able to get thank on. You, Evan. Thank you, Evan. I know just, I was able to say why Beluga, like what happened in May and during the pandemic um, and why not only the platform, but the community. And so I, I really loved your, your presentation and that visual of the classrooms, that is like a haunting image. Mary Alice, I cut, you cut out for a minute there. Oh, I did? Yeah. Oh, just that image. I have to say that image um, of the two classrooms, it was haunting. Yeah, it, it's, it's something, huh? Yeah, so um, thank you so much. I know confidence will, will jump in here, but I just wanted to say thank you in that the fact is I'm really happy that we've partnered. I love your platform and I really love your community. Uh, we appreciate that. Have a great day, guys.